In this video, we're going to talk about using the sine law and the cosine law to help us answer three-dimensional questions. In most three-dimensional sine law or cos law problems, there is a horizontal triangle and a vertical triangle, and these triangles share a side. We can then solve for the side length in either the horizontal triangle or the vertical triangle. When we do that, we can discard that triangle, i.e. the one we just used to solve for the side length, and then focus on the other triangle to solve the question. Sometimes there are more than one vertical triangle or more than one horizontal triangle, but we are still usually uh, looking for a shared side length. When we talk about bearings, we are talking about a horizontal triangle. This is whether we are talking about bearings such as north, south, east, and west, or whether we are talking about bearings such as Hamza looks out at a bearing of 150 degrees. When we talk about an angle of depression or an angle of elevation, we are talking about a vertical triangle. So for example, suppose Milos is standing in an observation tower. He looks out at a bearing of 100 degrees and sees Jaslyn at an angle of depression of 30 degrees. He looks out at a bearing of 350 degrees and sees Prabhdeep at an angle of depression of 25 degrees. If the tower is 30 meters high, we would like to know how far apart are Jaslyn and Prabhdeep. So first, let's consider the horizontal triangle. Milos looks at a bearing of 100 degrees and sees Jaslyn and looks at a bearing of 350 degrees and sees Prabhdeep. That tells me the triangle looks like this. The uh, first angle using Milos and using straight up the page as zero degrees, there's 100 and there is 350. Okay. And so what we have in between Prabhdeep and Jaslyn, therefore, is a 110 degree angle, because if that's a 350 degree angle, there's a little 10 degrees here. Uh, add to that the 100 degrees right there. Okay. Now, we'd like to know how far apart these two people are. Okay, fair enough. Problem is, we don't really have any other information about that triangle. We're going to have to get more information, and that's where the vertical triangles are going to come into play. Now, let's focus our attention on this line right here from M to J. That line is actually along the ground. But if you remember, Milos is up in a tower. So as weird as this might sound, this uh, where Milos is is actually elevated uh, as opposed to where Jaslyn and Prabhdeep are, which are both on ground level. So Milos is elevated, but if we were to look at it from a side angle, if we were standing on the ground and looking at it from that angle, it would look like this, where Milos is uh, standing at the top of a tower and looking uh, down at Jaslyn standing a certain uh, angle away, a certain distance away. Well, if Milos's uh, angle of depression is 30 degrees, that's this angle right here. And we've just set up a, uh, a Z pattern, meaning that this is also going to be uh, 30 degrees right there. Okay. Now, um, we know that the uh, tower uh, meets the ground at 90 degrees, so there's a 60 degree angle uh, shown. And we know that the tower is 30, degree, 30 meters high, so uh, what we would like to know is how far apart is the base of the tower from Jaslyn. And that would represent this side of the triangle shown in our diagram. Well, uh, we can use Sakatoa or the sine law to solve for side length y. So I'll use the sine law. y over the sine of 60 equals 30 over the sine of 30 degrees. So y is equal to 30 sine 60 degrees over sine 30 degrees, meaning y is roughly 51.96. And we can put that uh, 51.96, that circled in red, where it belongs in the triangle on the right, right there. Now let's consider the other vertical triangle. Now what we're doing is we're considering from uh, Milos to Prabhdeep. We're imagining someone on the side looking at it. And if they were to look at it there, remember Milos is elevated. So if they were to look at it from the side, they'd see Prabhdeep is on the ground. Milos is elevated, uh, looking down at Prabhdeep. He's looking down at a 25 degree angle of depression to Prabhdeep. 
So there's a 25 degree angle of elevation from Pravdeep to Milos. And if that's a 25 degree angle, there's obviously a 65 degree angle there. And we're going to solve for Z. Well, uh, Z over the sine of 65 degrees will equal 30 over the sine of 25 degrees, meaning Z is equal to 30 sine 65 degrees over sine 25 degrees, which is roughly 64.34. So there's uh, 64.3 meters from the base of the uh, tower to where Prabhdeep is on the ground. And we can put that where it belongs on the right-hand triangle. So these two side lengths represent the same thing. And so now we can use the Coase Law. We have just a horizontal triangle and we can uh, use the Coase Law to figure out uh, the distance x. So we use those vertical triangles because we uh, needed to find out information about that horizontal triangle, but now, now we can discard those vertical triangles and just solve the only triangle remaining, uh, solve for x. So using the Coase Law, we see x squared equals the first side length squared plus the second side length squared minus two times one side length times the other side length times the cos of 110 degrees. Ultimately, x is roughly 95.5, and we can say, that Jaslin and Prabhdeep are approximately 95.5 meters apart. Another, another example of a 3D question. Uh, two roads intersect at an angle of 9 degrees. Bailey travels down one road at a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. And Carmela travels down the other road at a speed of 32 kilometers an hour. Fifteen minutes later, a police helicopter above and between Bailey and Carmela is at an elevation of 500 meters and sees Bailey at an angle of depression of 16 degrees, and we want to know the straight line distance from Carmela to the helicopter. Okay, so first let's look at a horizontal triangle. There's an intersection in the road, and two roads uh, have an angle between them of 9 degrees. So we draw those two roads in, 9 degrees. Um, Bailey uh, has been driving uh, 20 kilometers an hour for 15 minutes, so 20 kilometers an hour times a quarter of an hour is going to get her five kilometers farther away. So we can say there's a side length of five here. And similarly, Carmela, she's been traveling 32 kilometers an hour for a quarter of an hour. So she's going to be eight kilometers away. So we can put those in there. And we'd like to know how far apart Bailey is from Carmela. This part of the question is actually pretty straightforward. It's a straightforward uh, Coase Law question. Uh, so we solve for x, and we get that x is roughly equal to 3.16. So we see that Bailey and Carmela are roughly 3.16 uh, meters apart. Now here's the thing. There is Here's Bailey and here's Carmela. They're both on ground level. Somewhere in between them, it might be here, it might be here, we don't know where. But somewhere in between them is a helicopter, and it's elevated. So if the helicopter's here, it's quite a bit elevated over Bailey and Carmela. Or maybe the helicopter's here, it's quite a bit uh, elevated over Bailey and Carmela. We don't know exactly where it is. So um, it says just because the helicopter is above and between the two cars doesn't mean that it's above and exactly halfway between the two cars. What we're going to have here is a vertical triangle where we've got Bailey on the road, and we've got Carmela on the road, and we've got a helicopter somewhere in between. We don't know exactly where. Here's Bailey, here's Carmela, here's the helicopter. We're looking at it, it's a vertical triangle. We're looking at it like this, and we're gonna try and find out some information about them. So there's our uh, best guess at what the situation might look like. Now, um, I put 0 0.5 here because we want to keep our units the same, and 500 meters is equal to 0 0.5 kilometers, and we see that Bailey and Carmela are 3.16 kilometers apart. There's an angle of uh, depression to Bailey of 16 degrees from the helicopter, so that's like saying if the helicopter drew a straight line, there'd be a 16 degree angle here. So that means there's a 16 degree angle here because we have a Z pattern set up here and here. Okay. So um, we're now going to do our best to solve for angle Z. And it shouldn't be too hard to do that. Or sorry, not angle Z, side length Z. 
And it shouldn't be too hard to do that. What we're doing is we're trying to just solve for this side length right there. Um, this particular triangle, we have one angle of 90 degrees, another angle of 16 degrees. Since we know two angles, then the, the third angle is pretty easy to figure out. That's 74 degrees. And we can set up a sine law where Z over the sine of 74 degrees will equal 0 0.5 over the sine of 16 degrees. Okay, so doing that, we see ultimately that Z is roughly equal to 1.74. So therefore, um, we know from where the helicopter is uh, directly down to the ground, there's a horizontal distance there out to Bailey of about 1.74. So that means that W must be equal to 3.16 minus 1.74, which is about 1.42. We can put that there. Now, we'd like to know the straight line distance from Carmela to the helicopter. That just means we want to know this side length. Now, if it had said, what's the horizontal distance from Carmela to the helicopter, we would have figured out this side length. But it didn't. It said the straight line distance from uh, Carmela to the helicopter. So what we're going to do is uh, find that diagonal red line. Okay, we want to find a value for V. Uh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to do that because we actually know that this is 0 0.5, this is 1.42, and um, uh, we know that there's a 90 degree angle in between them. So using that Pythagorean theorem, we have 1.51, and we can say the actual distance from Carmela to the helicopter is roughly 1.5 kilometers. If the question had asked us what's the angle of elevation from Carmela to the helicopter, it would have been pretty uh, easy to figure that out, really. Uh, once we figure out that uh, side length, we could have just uh, used the cosine law uh, on this triangle, and we would have been able to figure out that uh, uh, angle of elevation. Now, imagine here Tina is in a tower. She looks out at a bearing of 80 degrees and sees Herman. And she looks out at a bearing of 120 degrees and sees Conrad. Now, Herman looks up at an angle of elevation of 10 degrees to see Tina. And Conrad looks up at an angle of 13 degrees to see Tina. If Herman and Conrad are 20 meters apart, we want to know how tall the tower is. Now, this question is a little more complicated. So the horizontal triangle looks like this. We've got a triangle, uh, sorry, we've got a tower, and we look straight north, and now 80, and when I say straight north, I don't mean north necessarily, but to the top of the page, just to keep our, our diagram consistent. If we go 80 degrees, we get to where they can see Herman, and if we go 120 degrees, i.e. an extra 40, we get to where they can see Conrad. So there's a 40 degree angle here. This diagram is what's being reproduced right there. Okay. So now we've got the diagram. And um, we would like to know, uh, ideally, uh, more information about that triangle. But we don't quite have it yet. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Herman's vertical triangle. So what I want you to imagine is, imagine that you're a person standing right here and you're looking, you're on ground level. You know Herman is on ground level. and you're. But you also know Tina is elevated in the tower. And so that means Herman is looking up at Tina along this line. So here's the horizontal distance from Herman to the base of the tower. Herman's looking up at Tina at an angle of elevation of 10 degrees. Okay, well, um, we want to know, uh, we'd like to get, uh, we'd like to ideally know exactly how much, what M is equal to. But in this case, we're not going to be able to do it. So we're going to do something a little bit more clever. What we're going to do is we're going to get an expression for M in terms of H. And you'll see why in a couple of minutes. First, what we're going to do is we're going to say m over the sine of 80 degrees is going to equal h over the sine of 10 degrees. So m will equal the sine of 80 degrees over the sine of 10 degrees times h. And we'll be able to say that m is roughly equal to 5.67h. So the horizontal distance from Herman to the base of the tower is equal to approximately 5.67 times the height of the tower and that goes right here 
in our horizontal uh, triangle, and there it is. Okay? Now, we're going to do the same thing with Conrad and Tina. So if that didn't quite make sense, we'll try it one more time. Imagine, if you will, that you are um, standing here looking at Conrad and Tina. You know, Conrad's on the ground. You know, Tina is elevated. So Conrad will be looking up at Tina. When you do that, uh, you see Conrad's looking at her at an angle of uh, elevation of 13 degrees. So we'll, uh, we know the third angle in that triangle will be 77. Uh, we'll let there be a variable just so we can uh, solve for the side length. We'll call it N. And using the Coase law, we'll see N over the sine of 77 degrees equals H over the sine of 13 degrees. So N will equal the sine of 77 degrees over the sine of 13 degrees times H. Sine of 77 degrees over the sine of 13 degrees is roughly 4.33. So N is roughly 4.33H, and we put that here. Okay. Now, we know in a way four pieces of information. We know two side lengths and we also know the third side length and an angle. Normally we say we only need three pieces of information, but in this case we need an extra piece of information because we don't really know the values of two of those side lengths, but we have them both in terms of the same variable. So it gets a little bit more complicated, but what we can do now is we can set up a Coase Law equation. We can say 20 squared is equal to 5.67H squared plus 4.33H squared times 5.67H times 4.33H times the cos of 40. And when I say 5.67H squared, I mean the quantity 5.67H, that entire quantity squared. And same with the entire quantity of 4.33H. So you'll see what we mean in a second. We set up a Coase Law like this. 20 squared equals 5.67H quantity squared plus 4.33H quantity squared minus 2 times 5.67H, 4.33H cos of 40 degrees. Now, 5.67H times 5.67H is roughly 32.15H squared. 4.33H times 4.33H is roughly 18.75H squared. Negative 2 times 5.67H times 4.33H times the cosine of 40 degrees is roughly equal to negative 37.61H squared. 32.15H squared plus 18.75H squared minus 37.61H squared is equal to 13.29H squared. So 20 squared is equal to 13.29H squared. Well, the square root of 20 squared is just 20. And the square root of 13.29H squared can be expressed like this. We know H is positive because it's the height of a tower. So we can just say uh, 20 will equal the square root of 13.29, which is 3.65 times H. Uh, to put a little bit of a finer point on it, uh, 3.65H times 3.65H uh, is uh, approximately equal to 13.29H squared. So when we square root that right-hand side and we know H is positive, we get 3.65H. 20 squared is equal to 400, and when we square root that later, we get a 20. So 20 is equal to 3.65H, so that means H is uh, roughly equal to 20 over 3.65. In other words, H is roughly equal to 5.5, and we can say the height of the tower is approximately 5.5 meters. Mm -hmm.